Today we celebrate the Mass of the 31st Sunday in the Ordinary Time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. My dear friends in Christ, as we come before the Lord today, the Lord reminds us of the two great commandments, love of God above all things, and love of neighbor as ourselves. That these two great commands lead us to the kingdom of heaven. With that in mind, let us acknowledge our sins as we prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the source of all blessings. Lord, have mercy. Christ, you give us your great commandments of love. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you lead us to the joy of eternal life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty God, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. <clears throat> you are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful people offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant we pray that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the gifts that you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, saying, Fear the Lord your God, and keep throughout the days of your lives all his statutes and commandments which I enjoin on you, and thus have long life. Hear then, Israel, and be careful to observe them, that you may grow and prosper the more, in keeping with the promise of the Lord, the God of your fathers, to give you a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Therefore you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Take to heart these words, which I enjoin on you today. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Our response to God's word. I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, O Lord, my strength. O Lord, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. I love you, Lord, my strength. My God, my rock of refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Praise be the Lord, I exclaim, and I am safe from my enemies. I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord lives, and blessed be my rock. Extolled be God, my Savior. You who gave great victories to your king and showed kindness to your anointed. I love you, Lord, my strength. 
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews, brothers and sisters. The Levitical priests were many because they were prevented by death from remaining in office. But Jesus, because he remains forever, <clears throat> has a priesthood that does not pass away. Therefore, he is always able to save those who approach God through him, since he lives forever to make intercession for them. It was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners, higher than the heavens. He has no need, as did the high priest, to offer sacrifice day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. He did that once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints men subject to weakness to be high priests. But the word of the oath which was taken after the law appoints a son who was made perfect forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Whoever loves me will keep my word, says the Lord, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. One of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, which is the first of all the commandments? Jesus replied, the first is this, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, Well said, teacher. You are right in saying he is one, and there is no other than he, and to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered with understanding, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared to ask him any more questions. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Our parish has had a long and beautiful history. That history began in 1927 when our parish was established. Every parish, as you know, has the name of a saint or one of the titles of our Lord of our, or our Blessed Mother. When this parish was established, the founding pastor, Monsignor Felitti, selected the name of our beloved Saint Teresa. She had been canonized as a saint shortly before the founding of our parish, and this was the first church named in her honor in the Archdiocese of New York. That was 94 years ago. And all during those years, our people have loved St. Teresa. She has been and is now and will always be very much our saint. I always tell the children that it is so important that they know about her how she lived a short life of only 24 years, and yet filled those years with a tremendous love, love of God, 
and love of neighbor. Our gospel tonight speaks of those two loves, and they belong together. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength. And then we must let our love of God shine forth in our love and service of one another. The two great commandments. When we follow those two great commandments, as the man in the gospel did, then as our Lord said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. St. Teresa, during her brief years, was never far from the kingdom of God. That does not just mean the kingdom of God in heaven. It means the kingdom of God that happens here and now, in our hearts and in our lives as we try to live those two great commands. When we do God's kingdom, or perhaps better to say his kingship, his being our king, shines forth in us. Another way of putting that is that when we truly live the two great commands, when we really love God above all things, and when we really love our neighbor, not just when that is easy, but also when it is hard, then we are on our way to becoming what God wants us all to be, his saints. Saint Teresa said so beautifully, I want to become a saint. As simple as that. And we should say those words every day. And we should remember her other powerful words. There is only one tragedy in life, not to become a saint. But as we hear those words, perhaps we say to ourselves, isn't being a saint only for special people? People like St. Teresa, people far better and closer to God than I am. I have my sins. I have my failures. How can I possibly become a saint? This week, dear friends, we begin the month of November. And November is rightly called the month of saints. Shall we say the saints who have made it to heaven and the saints in progress. And that means every one of us. Every person, man, woman, or child. Older person or younger person. Long-time Catholic and new convert. Someone who has come home to God after many years. Every person is called to be a saint. Our Holy Father, Pope Francis, has spoken beautifully about this. The Pope says that we should consider the saints as members of our family. And like good family members, they help us every day. He said this, the saints are close to us. Indeed, they are our truest Brothers and sisters, they understand us and love us. They know what is truly good for us, and they help us and await us. They invite us on the path of happiness. They are happy already, and they want us to be happy with them in heaven too. But still we say to ourselves, doesn't the Pope mean that only extraordinary people can become saints? St. Teresa would answer that question by saying, extraordinary accomplishments, that does not make a saint. What makes a saint is not extraordinary things, 
but extraordinary love, love shown in the daily things of life, what St. Teresa called her little way of holiness. Becoming a saint is no more and no less than living those two great commandments, living our lives as the Lord Jesus wants us to do, filled with love. A beautiful way of living the commandments and reminding ourselves what they mean is to ask ourselves two questions. First, what would Jesus do? How would he show his love and concern for someone in need? But then to ask the second question, what does Jesus want me to do? What is he asking me to do today, at home, at work, at school, in my neighborhood, with my friends, or even with people whom I do not even know? What is Jesus asking me to do? Or even better, what does Jesus expect me to do? Our Holy Father says that we are all blessed to have had saintly people who have touched our lives. Parents, grandparents, teachers, priests, friends and neighbors who have gone home to God. The Pope calls them the saints next door. They would not want us to call them saints, but they are. And we can all remember wonderful people like that, whose saintly lives have touched us. I remember a dear lady <clears throat> who has gone home to God. Antoinette was her name. She was well in her 90s, had spent a beautiful life raising her children and grandchildren, loving God and neighbor. I used to bring her Holy Communion because she was homebound. Antoinette only spoke French, and any time I visited her, I had to dust off my little French knowledge to speak with her and to pray with her. One day, I wanted to say to her that it was too bad that she could not come to church anymore. But I couldn't think of the word for church. And so I said, Antoinette, it is too bad you cannot come to the house of God. And this wise old lady said to me, Dear Father, the whole world is the house of God. That is what makes saints. Realizing that the whole world is the house of God. When we live that way, as that dear lady did, then we are on our way to becoming saints. May our saint, Saint Teresa, help us on our way. And every day, may we say her words and mean them. I want to become a saint. May God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Join in our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial of the Father, 
Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified in the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds with the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear friends, in Christ standing in God's holy presence, we present our knees before him, saying after each of them, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Archbishop Timothy, God the Dome, and all the leaders of the church, that they will help us to grow on the path of holiness and truth, we pray to the Lord. That as we hear the gospel today, we remember our Lord's two great commandments, love of God and love of neighbor, we pray to the Lord. And as we celebrate this week the Feast of All Saints, we will be mindful that the Lord calls all of us to be his saints and join him in eternal glory, we pray to the Lord. That during the coming month of November, the month of all souls, <clears throat> we will remember the importance of praying for the souls in purgatory, that they will be helped on their way to heaven. We pray to the Lord. For our American servicemen and women serving throughout the world, particularly members of our parish, that they will be protected in safety, we pray to the Lord. For doctors, nurses, EMTs, and healthcare professionals, police officers, and firefighters, that the Lord will bless them <clears throat> in their service of us all. We pray to the Lord. For those who are sick, particularly those suffering from the virus, and for our beloved dead, we pray to the Lord. Let us offer our own prayer in silence. Heavenly Father, you know the prayers that are on our lips and those that are deep within our hearts. Receive our prayers and receive our love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your witness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. <clears throat> for the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your witness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Wash away my iniquity, O Lord, and cleanse me from my sin.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this sacrifice, O Lord, become for you a pure offering and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. He has made us children of the light, rising to new and everlasting life. And he has opened the gates of heaven to receive us, his faithful people. His death is our ransom from death, and his resurrection is our rising to life. And so we join with all the angels and the saints to praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Son in the highest. The Lord Jesus now comes to this altar to change bread and wine into his body and blood. Let us welcome him to our hearts. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, <clears throat> we proclaim your death, O Lord until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, 
together with Francis, our Pope and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember us of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit <clears throat> to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> At our Savior's command, and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from me. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, to the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, <clears throat> my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. <clears throat> Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep us safe to eternal life. Amen. We invite you now to welcome our Lord in spiritual holy communion to your heart. Give thanks to God that we have joined in the holy sacrifice of the Mass today. 
We pray as always for you, and we pray that the Lord will keep you and your family in safety and good health. Let us pray. May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, so that renewed by this holy sacrament, we may be prepared by your gift to receive what you promise. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.